Hey Loopers, Matt McCoy here. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer and the founder of loopcommunity.com. Today I'm gonna to show you a really fun thing you can do with Ableton Live. I went into my closet and I dug out some of these old game controllers. You might have one of these in your closet. Maybe you used it to play Minecraft or Excite Bike or some racing game. I have another one here. This is a uh, Nintendo controller and it has a USB jack on the other end. So I can plug this into my computer. And what I'm gonna show you today is how you could use a controller like this to control Ableton Live. It's really simple. First thing we're gonna do is plug it into the computer. Then to make this work, we're gonna to have to use a third-party app called Joystick Mapper. You can get it in the App Store. So let me show you Joystick Mapper. First thing we're gonna to have to do is create a new preset. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Add New Preset. I'm gonna call this Ableton Live, all right? Now what we have to do is add a new joystick or game controller to Joystick Mapper. So I'm gonna click Add New Joystick, and it automatically detects the USB gamepad that I have plugged in. Now what we have to do is have it detect the different buttons on the gamepad. So I'm gonna click Add New Bind, and you could manually set the buttons here by choosing the axis and then the number, um, or you can hit the Scan button, and it's going to detect the different buttons on the controller. So I'm gonna hit Scan, I'm gonna press the up arrow on my axis on the Nintendo controller. You can see that it identified it as axis number four. Now I can click add new, add new bind to add another one. I could do the select and start buttons if I wanted, or let's do the red B button. So I'm gonna click scan and hold the B button. And it detected that one as number two. Let's add another one. I'm gonna click scan, and this one's gonna be the A button. All right, and it detected that as button one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell these buttons to send different key commands. And that's how we're gonna map it in Ableton Live, all right? So in Joystick Mapper, we can choose here what key this, these buttons actually send. So on axis four, so my black axis, I'm gonna have it send, I could choose letter keys or number keys or other characters. For this example, we're gonna choose one. So it, when I press the axis here, it's gonna send the number one, all right? Now this red button, that's B, I'm gonna have that send number two, and the A button is going to send three. So one, two, and three. Now let's go ahead and close this out. And before we close Joystick Mapper, we wanna enable the preset by just clicking this uh, white box. So I just turned that preset on. Now let's go to Ableton Live. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go to key mapping. And just like you would map any key on your keyboard to anything here on the screen, I'm gonna map my game controller. So to make this simple, I'm actually gonna make the, uh, the black access pad my stop. So I'm gonna click on stop and click the access pad. And you can see that it mapped the stop button to this. And then let's go ahead and make the first song in our set uh, button B here. And the second song is gonna be A. You can see it's mapping those right here. Now I'm gonna close out key mapping and now you could play Ableton Live with a game controller. So I'm gonna press B One, and it launches two, my first song, intro, two, three, right? Four. I could maybe even map one of these to like a tap tempo and I could tap it in if I want. Let me hit the Band stop button. Two. And I'm gonna press A, one, two, which is this button one, over here, two, and that started three, my second four. song. Go back to B, and one, I could map all these buttons two, on this controller. Intro, two, three, four. Here's another fun thing you could do. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, erase those key mappings I just did. And this time what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use this to launch maybe some spontaneous band cues. So I'm gonna go to my band cue folder where I have different ones, and one, you know, here's one or two. two I downloaded Six. these from the Loop Community shop. So let's just say I want, uh, we're gonna use, we're gonna use one and four because what I wanna do is I wanna use these cues to tell my band, um, you know, what chord we're gonna be ending the song on, one or four, all right? So first I'm gonna, I'm gonna double click on these clips. I'm gonna change um, the mode to toggle just like this. And that way, I can go ahead and just launch these one, whenever I want, two, like that. Four, two, three, four. All right? One, four. 
So you can also change the quantization to none, which will get it to actually launch that clip right away. Now check this out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just go to key mapping. I'm gonna map the first button here to be one and the next one to be four, all right? So now when my song is playing, one, I can two, go ahead and intro, two, launch three, these spontaneous four. cues just by using my game controller. One, four, one, four, now, two, I wouldn't three, do that four. you know, right there in the song, but maybe at the very end of the song, I'm gonna be like, hey, we're gonna end this on a four. One. Or a, four, or a one. Four. So you could use a game controller to map to anything. You could use it to play beats in a uh, drum rack. Um, there's a lot of stuff you could do with it. But I think it's really fun. Check out, uh, you could probably buy a game controller on Amazon for pretty cheap. Check out Joystick Mapper. And of course, check out loopcommunity.com for all the tracks you need.